Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Sergio. This is Mike from Devil Driver and um, we're here doing an interview in lovely South Florida. It's not raining, uh, so you got a not plus. <laughs> it's been close, man. So what's going on, man? You're coming to the end of the tour. I think we uh, we talked about it earlier. Three days left. Three shows left. We got today, tomorrow in St. Pete, and then the day after that is in Orlando, and then I fly home. Nice, nice. That's a much needed rest, right? You guys been at it almost for the better part of a year, right? Nice. So how, how's it been? The new album's out now on Napalm Records, Trust No One. What, uh, what, can give me some reports from the road. What's been going on there? Well, it's the first time, I think, since we've ever put out a record where we actually are playing three songs. Uh, well, I'm not on this part of the tour, on the first part of the tour. Uh -huh. We're headlining, we, uh, we were playing three new songs, which I don't think we've ever done before when I mean, we first had a record out, which is a... Uh, me a good sign of people liking the record but the record to me actually seems kind of old at this point we do have another, yeah. another one coming out sometime first quarter next year. really so you've already been putting the work together and it's a covers record so it's okay. in, uh, there's not much we, work involved <laughs> well my part of the record took you know me and neil worked on it together and we did guitars and bass first and okay. rewrote all the these outlaw country songs and uh it took about two months to get that done. Then we did drums, and it's getting mixed right now by Steve Abbott. Haven't heard any mixes nice. yet, but it should be coming in pretty soon. Guys, nice. No, so I mean, um, interesting. You said like so you're doing uh, covers or whatnot. Now the process for it is not really just like, you know, give me the process musician-wise as far as what you use to do a good cover as opposed to. You know, being a regular cover band on a Friday night. <laughs> I don't like being a metal band that covers metal songs. I think that's just silly. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've covered, we did Holier Than Thou by Metallica, and we did Waste of Years by Art Maiden, and, and I'm kind of indifferent about the gotcha. songs. You know, I mean, I'm not much of an Iron Maiden fan. I'm a huge Metallica fan, but gotcha. Uh, I, I, <laughs> so. We did, uh, there's a country band called 16 Horsepower, and we did a song called Black Soul Choir by them on okay. our album Beast. Right. And that came out really cool, and Sail by AWOL Nation is, it's kind of a bittersweet thing, but that song has become our most popular song. Sadly, the pop it, song makes it, right? I, mean, <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess people like things that are familiar. At least you didn't do Despacito. No. <laughs> so. But so, we had a meeting in the back of the bus a few tours ago, the whole band, and we sat down and made a list of like 20 or 30 songs that, you know, we could possibly put on this next record. And then Neil and I just sat down and separately just started rewriting them on our own. And then we got together, did some final touches on them, and then did the whole process over again with guitars and bass. Mm -hmm. you know, finalizing everything and uh, when we got I think we did 13 and we're gonna release 12 okay nice and that's a pretty solid album though got a lot of guests on it Randy from Lamb of God is one of them uh, who else do we have it doesn't you'll find what's out the, what's the name of it once more Outlaws to the End Outlaws to the End is the name of the album that's awesome and that's going out on Napalm as well right They're yeah, pretty yes. much okay now, I mean, you talked a little bit um, not too long ago that saying that this is the first tour you're doing actually three songs off the new album. I mean, you, you, this is your seventh album. You have quite a catalog to pick from. So, I mean, how, how do you decide what you're going to play when you're only, you know, limited to sometimes a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour? It's not easy. <laughs> Try to give every album a little bit of love. Yeah. But in 45 minutes with seven albums, that's difficult. But over the course, I've been, thinking, I've been in the band for almost 14 years now. And I uh, I know which ones. Des knows which ones go over. Gotcha. Really well, we know. The, the ones that part, go over yeah, well. and Which ones go over well, which ones don't. And I always have fans come up to me and saying which ones that we wish we had to play. Last night I had someone came up to me and, you know, asking us to play I Dreamed I Died and but that one's not on the set. But there's certain songs like End of the Line, Clouds Over California, I Could Care Less, Meet the Wretched, that have always been in the set. I don't think we've ever played a show and not played I Could Care Less. Yeah. Gotcha. I actually suggested to Des uh, before this tour, I'm like, why don't we just not play I Could Care Less this tour? He just looked at me like, and I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, come on, man. Forget it. Okay, I was like, I regretted it the second I said it. You know? Now, do you play the same... Um, show nightly or do you choose night to night what songs to play or you just every now and then it, 
if we're feeling like it, we might add one in toward the okay. end. Some, lately, we've been adding Grinfucked in toward the end, depending on uh, gotcha. if we feel up to it or not. Yeah. And, it, uh, and also, thing when you're dead direct support, you're constricted by time. So absolutely. Sometimes we'll look at our techs and you know they'll give us the okay or n- give us the cutoff, like no, nope, got a f- one more, and then you're out. <laughs> and then they bring out the <laughs> the hook and get you out of there. Nice. So, I mean, um, all right, so you and Dez are obviously the longest standing members. Um, I think the uh, band was formed. You were there for about a uh, not you were there, but someone else was there about a year or two before, and mm-hmm. then you've stayed the longest. We got three new members. Tell me a little bit about uh, how that came about. Oh, we know how it came about. We're just saying tell us a little bit about the new members. <laughs> I was a little reluctant to work with the new members at first. This is no secret. Uh-huh. But Neil and Ashes, no, no, sorry, Neil and Austin, came over to my house and auditioned at my studio at the same time and obviously Austin couldn't uh, couldn't bring a drum kit in there so he kind of just air drummed everything but I had seen enough videos of him online doing drum solos and uh, he came really highly recommended by our producer Mark Lewis gotcha and I trust Mark so if Mark said he could he could do it and he was an awesome dude that was good enough for me and Neil came over played Dead to Rights for me which is one of our harder songs mm-hmm. to play and I it took literally one day of us just getting together, spending some time in a studio, writing, and I, it was just instant chemistry. Gotcha. It was good. And it was, it was a really fun record to write, trust no one. And I had a lot of fun doing Outlaws Till the End as well. And it's, they're just really good dudes. You know, the old guys in Double Driver too. you know, I'm still really good friends with all of them. You know, Chris, Bubble... Miller, Berkland, Kendrick, all of them. Yeah. They just went on their own separate ways and yeah, doing their own thing. Yeah, you know, Berkland really wanted to do his own band, and he's doing it right now. They're called Bad Wolves. And, okay. Uh, they've only played one show at the moment, but they're they're up to something right now. I think they're recording. Nice. But uh, you should probably see something with them early next year as well. But we all keep in contact, you know, and Jeff just didn't really want to tour anymore. Yeah. He's since gotten more into the real estate game. <laughs> but... I still love touring, man, you know, and Des was worried that I was, you know, getting ready to do something else. I was like, no. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> so I, mean, I, I, I very well might be a lifer. Uh, I like being on the road. I like touring. I like being in a different place every day. I kind of like the, the chaos of everything. And it's uh, it just suits my lifestyle, I guess. Gotcha. Interviews with weird people in towns with their phones going off oh, and nonsense it. like that. Love it. <laughs> so um, you kind of touched on a little bit. You, you mentioned chemistry. So you said that uh, you guys had chemistry right off the bat. Um, that actually helps a lot with songwriting. So, I mean, was it you found it to be a fairly easy process going in, back uh, into writing the new album? Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, the new record, there wasn't really a whole... There was writing, but there wasn't, you know. We, we basically followed the structures of, of, of the songs. Okay. Sometimes we added intros, sometimes we added some outros, we added some solos in some places. Some songs actually don't sound anything like yeah. the original, except for the vocal content. And uh, I would have to... When, when we started writing, or rewriting, I should say... I had a tendency to kind of stick more with the, the melodies of the, the actual song, and Neil had a tendency to kind of go off to right field a little bit with his writing. You know, we did Whiskey River by uh, Willie Nelson. And it, 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 there's not really a whole lot there, yeah. you know, so we had to kind of get creative and True. like, okay, what are we going to do to make it metal? And it, it was a cool process for me because, it, you know, gutting all these songs and really looking at how they're structured uh, made me realize that I had kind of gotten stuck in a rut as far as structuring a song in some ways. Gotcha. And I've, I, I deliberately went out of my way to try to structure songs differently on Trust No One here and there, especially on the opening track, Testimony and Truth. And But doing this covers record really has taken that even a little bit further. So I think gotcha. on the next record, you're going to see some different structures and things that uh, might seem a little bit unorth- unorthodox to... Uh, devil driver but maybe people won't even notice because i don't think as long as it kicks ass nobody cares the (laughs) listeners don't have a tendency to to dissect the songs the way the the writer does no no absolutely writers are more critical of their stuff you know so three days left going back to california what what do you do in your off season man what (laughs) what, when i'm when i get home i started my own company called audiovaultstudio.com and i'm selling Kemper profiles and xfx presets you know guitar geek stuff gotcha 
and I spend a lot of time surfing when I'm at home. I've uh, got some construction to do on my house, you know, just go home and lead a normal life until I get back home or get back out here again. Gotcha, gotcha. I just, awesome. call, I just called this home by accident. <laughs> We're like, oh, I'm already home. <laughs> it looks like home just a little bit more. Humid. I gotta go home and go to work. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Lovely, man. So, no, we're wrapping up towards the end of the interview. Um, is there anything you kind of want to add? I know uh, we covered quite a bit of ground. Uh, is there anything you think we, we need to go over right now? Or? Know, it seems like we covered quite a bit. I know, man. I know. I just don't want to occupy too much. I know you got a show to play here in a few minutes, so just want to get to it or whatnot. But, um, guys, new album is Trust No One. Devil Driver, Napalm Records, go out, listen to it. This is Mike, I'm Sergio, see ya.